Hi, I'm your host, Larissa Wurstiak. Through this podcast, I aim to empower and inspire jewelry entrepreneurs and innovators so they can thrive by doing what they love. I'm passionate about digital marketing for jewelry brands, and I'm excited to share my passion with you. This is episode 100, and today I'm celebrating two very exciting things. First, obviously, the 100th episode of my podcast and the official publication of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy, which I'm holding up here. If you are watching the YouTube version of this podcast, you can see my proof copy. I'm going to spend some time in this episode reflecting on the evolution of my podcast and talking about the process of writing and releasing my book. I'm just planning to have some fun and I hope that you'll join me for it. But before we get to all that, I want to share some marketing-related news and insights from the past week that caught my attention. In a Twitter thread that I found, influencer marketing expert Cody Wittick recently shared a really interesting case study about Quelo, or I think I'm saying it right. It's a jewelry brand that sells silicone rings. He compared the ROI of two influencers. One is a country singer's wife, and the other is a major league baseball MVP. Can you guess which influencer had more of an impact on the brand's bottom line? So Brittany Aldean, who is the country singer's wife, wears her Quelo ring con- occasionally. She was paid $1,700 to go live on Facebook with the ring, and the content that she created was then repurposed as an ad for the brand. Bryce Harper, the Major League Baseball MVP, wears his ring all the time, even during games. He was paid $96,000 by the brand, and then the brand repurposed the content that he specifically submitted for an ad. Who do you think brought in the most sales? Brittany actually brought in $35,000 while Bryce brought in $15,000. This is a great example of how micro-influencers can work, especially if the people that you choose know how to create high-quality content. On the latest episode of the podcast Retail Gets Real from the National Retail Federation, Ian Black, director of of retail at Shopify shares how the Shopify team is utilizing Omnichannel to help retailers and brands of all sizes tell their stories and connect with customers. Shopify is really ahead of the game when it comes to offering tools that help the businesses that use their platform get in front of the right customers, no matter where they are and how they want to buy. You can search for episode 189 of the podcast to listen for yourself. There's a lot of really great insights in there. Do you rely heavily on Facebook ads and other targeted advertising to get in front of the right customers? With more consumers these days feeling concerned about privacy and more rules and technologies being put in place to help address these concerns, businesses need to find other ways to reach their target customers. So in this article I found from Practical E-Commerce, marketer Ni Ahin says, quote, in terms of future-proofing a business's advertising and marketing, having first-party data and permissions associated with your in-house activities is the biggest thing, end quote. That means that businesses need to stop relying so much on third-party platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Google, and really start taking ownership of their own efforts at earning customer trust and managing the permissions of how customers would like to receive marketing messages from the brand. If you're looking for something to exchange for customer information, you should definitely start with content marketing. That's kind of the example and the advice that they give in that practical e-commerce article. If you wanna get the links to the articles I share in this segment of the podcast, you can sign up for my email newsletter by visiting joyjoya.com slash sign up and you'll get a digest with the links every time a new episode drops. I do want to share one other exciting thing if you are listening to this podcast the week that it's released. 
and you go to joyjoya.com slash win, you can actually enter to win a really exciting giveaway that's worth $700 in total. So it's to celebrate the launch of my book. Um, and it includes a one and a half hour coaching session with me that's completely customized to your needs. It includes one seat in photographer Alain Simic's jewelry photography course called Behind the Lens, and that's a $299 value. It includes an $85 gift card for Chris Mella, which is a brand that sells the most secure earring back in the world. I've tried it, it's awesome. And finally, a paperback copy of Jewelry Marketing Joy. Again, if you want to be in the running to win, the entries will be accepted until Friday, October 16th. You can visit joyjoya.com slash win and get all the information and details there. And if you are happening to listen to this before Tuesday, October 13th at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, you can join me on Instagram Live for a virtual book launch and release party at Joy Joya Marketing. Again, that's going to be on Tuesday, October 13th at 6 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Pacific. Phew, okay, lots of announcements. Let's get to the heart of the episode. So as I mentioned, I have so much to share today. On October 13th, which is near the time this podcast episode will be distributed to all podcast platforms, my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy, which if you're watching, you can see me holding up the proof copy will officially be published and shipping to everyone who has pre-ordered it. If you are one of those people, thank you. It's all the support is just, I appreciate it so much. It really, you know, makes me feel good about all the work that I put into this book and I'm glad that people are receiving it enthusiastically. So the first of its kind book for the industry Jewelry Marketing Joy includes more than 300 pages of comprehensive knowledge and wisdom about marketing your jewelry brand. Whether you're a beginner or you've been running your jewelry business for decades, you'll definitely benefit from the information in this book. I've been working on this project all year and I'll tell you a little bit more about that process. Some of the content has even been pulled from work I've done over the past few years, so you can't even imagine how excited I am to share it with you. JCK, National Jeweler, and Centurion have all shared news of the book, and I'm so thankful to have the support of the industry behind me. If you want to hear me read from the intro of the book to get a little bit more of a feeling for what it's all about, you should check out episode 96. In addition, you can visit jewelrymarketingjoy.com to learn more about the book and to order your very own copy. I want to share some background information about how this book came to be, in case you're curious. It's kind of an interesting story, I guess. Um, So ever since I started my business, Joy Joya, in 2016, I've been super committed to educating my prospects and clients with helpful, informative content. I really want jewelry industry entrepreneurs and leaders to feel empowered about their marketing and to understand both the best practices and trends in digital marketing, e-commerce, and customer experience. I have so much knowledge and insight to share, mostly because I'm just so passionate about it and I'm constantly trying to educate myself and you know, learning things by working with my clients. And it's super fun for me to communicate with people who listen to my podcast, watch my videos, and read my blog. It's really the thing that keeps me excited about my work and makes me motivated to move forward. In 2016, I actually only started with a blog and email list. In 2018, I decided to branch out and experiment with a new way of sharing my content that kind of pushed my comfort zone a little bit. So as a result, I had the idea to launch a podcast and I taught myself everything myself, how to do all the things associated with that, like getting on iTunes, you know, editing and uploading the files, really all of those things. I published my first episode on November 12th, 2018, And the title of that podcast episode was How to Prepare Your Jewelry Marketing for 2019. Can you even imagine? 2019 was like a whole different place and time. You know what I mean? 
I'm honestly afraid to go back and listen to that episode because I know how far I've come and how much I've learned in my podcasting journey over 100 episodes. Since that first episode, I've covered such a wide range of topics And I've even had the chance to interview so many amazing guests, including photographer Alain Simic, who's included in the giveaway I mentioned earlier, jewelry, pricing, and product development expert Nan Lung Palmer, Tracy Matthews of Flourish and Thrive Academy, and jewelry, social media marketing expert Liz Kantner, just to name a few of the people I had on this podcast. Wow, even when I think about all of that, I can't even believe how lucky I am to have the experience to gain knowledge and insight from all of these people and be able to pick their brains and subsequently share all of that with you. So if you if you think you've learned a lot from this podcast, I can promise you that I've probably learned at least 10 times more than you have. It has been such a humbling and enlightening journey that requires me to constantly be open-minded and trust the process always. Earlier this year, in the midst of COVID, I decided to launch a video component of my podcast, which you can find on YouTube if you're not already watching this episode. Um, I've done a lot of really challenging things for the sake of my business since I first launched it, but I have to admit that video, if you can believe it, has been one of the biggest hurdles so far. It does not come easily to me. I have such a new appreciation for people who do it well. I think it is so hard to do video well. Um, And I'm lucky to be in Los Angeles where I have friends who work in entertainment and I pick their brains all the time for ideas and help, and I still find it to be an ever-evolving journey. Needless to say, all these years of developing content have given me so much to potentially include in a book. Unlike making videos, writing actually comes really easily and naturally to me. I'm, and I'm no stranger to writing books, if you can believe it. I have a Master of Fine Arts degree in creative writing, and I self-published a collection of short stories titled The Prescribed Burn in 2012. I actually have it right here. I don't know why I didn't prepare to show it to you on camera. So if you're watching this video, you can see me hold up a copy. You can find it on Amazon if you're curious. However, I have to say, no matter how many books you've written, nothing really prepares you for the journey of writing your next book. Um, Each one is definitely its own insane challenge. So knowing that I wanted to write this book about jewelry marketing, Earlier this year, in January, I made a New Year's resolution to create a schedule with a projected release date of September 15th. I wrote very diligently every week. 2020 has been such a difficult year for so many people and for so many reasons, but if I personally can find any sort of silver lining in it, I would say that it gave me even more time to focus on this gargantuan gargantuan project that I undertook in January. So I diligently kept to my schedule and I had a vision in the summer for how I wanted the the title to be and how I wanted the cover to look. And thankfully, photographer Alain Simic agreed to take the cover photo. I was so excited about that. And the ring on the cover, again, if you're watching, is actually a vintage 18 karat gold piece I found on eBay that when I saw it really attracted me with its um, upward arrow shape, which to me symbolizes growth and progress, which is something I wanted to communicate in the cover. My talented boyfriend Jordan designed the cover, so beautiful. I did all the interior layout and editing and proofreading and file preparation and research about best practices for releasing a book. Let me tell you, it was so much work many late nights and full weekends worth of working on top of my normal client work, especially as I was getting closer to my self-imposed deadline. The content in the book is definitely a culmination of all the content I've produced so far on my blog and podcast from 20, well, going back to 2016. However, I also had to create heaps of new content to fill in gaps, you know, um, expand upon topics throughout the book, make it an actual book people will read and love. So even if you are a dedicated listener of this podcast, 
you're still going to find so much information that you're not going to find anywhere else. And so what's the next step after this? You're probably wondering, well, don't worry, I'm not stopping the podcast because I suddenly have a book. Hopefully, I want to keep releasing content. I want to keep learning myself and educating people also and eventually releasing an expanded and updated version of this book sometime, maybe once I mentally recover from doing this one. Um, And I also am working on developing a course and workbook that's based on this book, and that's already actually been in development for a little bit. I'm really excited to share that with you in the coming months also. So it'll be like a whole comprehensive educational system, and I just, I'm really happy to be moving forward with that project. So thank you for following me on this journey so far. I hope I've been able to help you grow and build your jewelry business and that I can continue doing that. If you can take a moment to leave a rating and review of this podcast, I would really appreciate it. In addition, once you get your copy of Jewelry Marketing Joy, if you can leave a review on Amazon, that would truly mean the world to me. And I just, I wouldn't even be able to tell you thank you enough. So thanks all for listening, for watching, for reading, however it is you access my content. You can always email me, Larissa, that's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com with your questions, comments, or feedback. And visit jewelrymarketingjoy.com to find out how you can order your very own copy of my book.